so here we are going to solve a truss problem so this is one of the special case because here there are two element along with that there is an spring element okay for the both the element for bar the hanks modulus and the area is same but the length having different for the bar 1 it is given as 5 meter and for the bar 2 it is mentioned as 10 meter for the spring element it is given k is equal to 2000 kN per meter so you need to find what are the deflections and also stresses whatever the structure related data which is required for the problems you need to find out right so the load is applied at the node 1 having 25 kN it is applied here and the nodes are which is already mentioned like this is 1 2 3 and this is 4 okay so now you need to uh, find what are the displacement at 1 2 3 so generally for the truss element there will be two deformation of displacement like if you suppose if you take the one so the horizontal displacement will be taken as u1 and vertical will be taken as v1 similarly for 2 also 3 also and 4 also there will be two displacements okay now we'll go for the solution okay so the hanks modulus area length which is already all are in meter and the stiffness k is equal to 2000 kN per meter is given so now you can take 2 into 10 power of 6 newton per meter so here it is meter square is given that is an wrong element here wrong uh written here so that should be meter okay now if you consider okay so now we are considering this spring element is also like a bar element but the stiffness is given okay k value is given directly so now we'll go for the element 1 okay so just a minute yeah from here the solution is started okay so for the first step as i told you at 1 there will be u1 v1 at 2 u2 v2 at 3 u3 v3 and 4 u4 u5 okay and it is mentioned as 1 to 2 are the displacement 3 to 4 5 to 6 7 to 8 you remember this displacement which will be used for the in the displacement uh, for the stiffness matrix this will be used like 1 2 2 at node 1 at node 2 3 to 4 at node 3 5 to 6 at node 4 7 to 8 so there are totally eight displacement right eight degree of freedoms okay now the forces also similarly at 1 there will be f1x f1y horizontal will be f1x vertical will be f1y so for this problem only this force is given it means you are having f1y only force is known to you remaining no other forces are given so after that uh, we are going for the element 1 to calculate the stiffness matrix for the element 1 so element 1 which is made an angle of 45 degree here okay so this angle is mentioned in the problem that is given as 45 degree okay as you can see in the question so this 45 degree is given so what are the theta value you have to find because it's a truss element so you need to find cos theta sin theta l or m generally we are taking so here if you take this as another axis so this is totally what will be the angle which is made in the horizontal so 45 is given so it should be 135 here is the 135 okay remember this is 135 this angle is 
135 is given. Okay, so here theta is 135 for the element 2, element 1. And for element 2, again if you take the element 2, the theta will be totally it is 180 degree. For element 2, theta will be 180. Okay, it's horizontal. Now if you take the element 3, the theta will be 180 plus 90. So 180 plus 90, it will be 270. Okay, so the total angle for the element 3 will be 270. And uh, total theta for the element 2, that is 180. To theta for the element 1 is 135. Hope that is clear to you. Okay, now we will go for the element 1. Theta as I told you, it is 135 like this and if you made L square it means cos square cos we have represented L so we are getting 0.5 after total L square or cos square theta next M square that is sin square theta again we are getting 0.5 so if you made L into M so sin theta into cos theta again we are getting 0.5 this is for element 1 ok now we have to calculate what is the stiffness matrix for element 1 what is the stiffness matrix for element 1 we have to calculate ok so stiffness matrix for element 1 that is k1 is equal to a1 e1 by l1 a e by l ok just substitute a by l and this is the nodes like as I told you for element 1 nodes are connected from 1 to 4 so this is for node 1 this is for node 2 you have to write 1 2 3 4 this is very important when you are making the global stiffness matrix so very carefully you have to write down this now after that you are getting k value as this one ok this is k1 similarly we will go for k2 total angle is 180 l square is 1 m square is 0 lm is 0 now k2 is equal to a2 e2 a2 by l2 length for the element 2 again for element 2 what are the connectivity 1 to 3 so the one at 3 there are displacement 5 6 at 1 1 to 2 ok so that's what we have written as 1 to 5 6 1 to 5 6 again here there is a mistake ok it should be 1 to 5 6 here it should be 5 6 ok make it correction again they have made correct ok see so make these changes ok this is wrong here this should be 5 and this should be 6 ok and now we will go for the element 3 the angle which I already told it should be 3 270 and L square is 0 M square is 1 LM is equal to 0 again now we will go for calculating the stiffness matrix ok for L3 here ok so K3 is equal to now finally we have to calculate the element stiffness matrix for 3 so 3 having only k values so just you write down the k because ae bell ae by l that is is equal to stiffness ok so directly you can write 2 into 10 power of 6 as k value outside the matrix and these are the displacement 4 displacement at k3 is connected from 1 to 4 at 4 we have displacement 7 and 8 if you remember the old one just go through the previous uh, starting video there it was 7 to 8 are the displacement means that's what at 1 to 4 it is connecting the element 3 so these are the displacement at 1 to 7 8 ok now here within the matrix this will be there ok for element 3 if we made this connection ok so we are getting this value now what is the combination of finite element equation ok combination of finite element it means we are going to assembling the k1 k2 k3 ok it means it is a global stiffness matrix ok so global stiffness matrix where k u is equal to f so here in the left side it is written f is equal to k this is equal to u so this entire value this entire value is as k ok and this is as u and this is as f right so global stiffness matrix you have to make it 
by writing the all steps uh, displacement here 1 to 8 and in the vertical also 1 to 8 you have to write first now uh, so the forces f1 x so we are having only f2 y it is given uh, sorry f1 y is given in the question f1 y sorry f1 y because vertical force only given in the question okay now apply the boundary condition but boundary condition means whatever the fixed elements are there okay so that should be zero so like now 2 is fixed and 3 is fixed okay node 2 and node 3 are fixed so there the whatever the displacements are there that all displacement will be zero either it may be horizontal vertical displacement okay so only the displacement which will be available at uh, node 1 only node 1 that is u2 u3 uh, u1 v1 that only the unknown displacement you have to find out okay so the displacement like you see here it is written u2 v2 is 0 u3 v3 is 0 u4 v4 also 0 means what is the remaining here u1 v1 these are the unknown displacement you have to find out and you apply this boundary condition in the equation above equation here you have to find write down okay so as i told you the force is taken as 25 so again minus is given minus is means the load is applying downward okay applying downwards that's what it is minus if it is applying upward then it will be plus okay so that's what now what are the boundary here the all the boundary conditions are zero only remaining sir u1 u2 okay so here this all rows and their columns will be eliminated up to here all will be eliminated only u1 v1 will be remaining everything is eliminated this one this one this one this one this one and these rows also all every rows are eliminated okay so what is the remaining here because these displacement are zero so their rows and columns will be eliminated so remaining will be this one in the matrix okay same thing it may be written here in the next page okay right here is the solution so what is the remaining here after the reduction of the matrix so 0 minus 25 and outside the matrix there will be 10 power of 5 inside the matrix these are the values four values u1 v1 are the display now you just make the solution or make the multiplication you are getting u1 and u2 by solving this okay these are the u1 and u2 we obtain from the equations u1 is this value and u2 is the uh, u1 v1 okay at node 1 these are the displacement at node 1 okay so other displacement it will be zero because they are fixed and also you need to find their reaction forces okay so reaction forces at node 1 uh, so node 1 there will be near node reaction forces there will be reaction force at 2 and there will be reaction force at 3 and 4 also okay because they are fixed and this is by using the uh, formula we are getting the stresses at the element 1 yeah e, l e by l minus 1 minus l minus m l m okay l is nothing but the cos theta m is nothing but sin theta so just substitute and make the multiplication e by l whatever the value you are getting make the multiplication with this and you are getting the uh, means these are the stresses means at one u1 v1 okay at node one what are the displacement there one to two okay so u1 v1 for element one 1 to 2 it is connected right so u1 v1 u2 v2 u2 v2 will be 0 so u1 v1 that already which you calculated this is u1 v1 that values are this okay now make the entire multiplication you are getting 51.2 mega pascal similarly you calculate for 2 and you can calculate for the uh, 192 bar element okay so like that the you can solve this type of problems okay so thank you for your patience for listening me and please support the channel. Thank you once again.